Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting at the UK. If it's the first time you're passing through, subscribe, like and share. Um, the reason for this um, video this evening is because I was reading the article about Pizza Express and apparently they were doing this week-long Macmillan Cancer Charity event. What they were saying to their, um, their staff was, um, for this week, um, week-long event, um, let us have your tips and we'll put it in the charity box. A couple of disgruntled um, employees said that they shouldn't have to put it in the charity box and they felt like they felt guilty and put it in anyway but then they felt as though they shouldn't really have to because it should be up to them whether or not they contribute and if um, Pizza Express are putting on a charity event they should be paying um, they were saying it's not like uh, Pizza Express is matching the tips they're not they're just taking their tips and putting them in the box and these two um, waiters in particular were peed off and went to the newspapers about it. Now, you know, with tipping, it's a really touchy subject. In um, They call Brits the meanest tippers. They call us cheapskates. They call us everything, um, especially if you go to America. I mean, most countries you go to, if they know that you're British, they won't even, they're, they're just duck and dive and go somewhere else and look for Americans or Germans who tip better than us. And, you know, it's what is behind this tipping lark, to really and truly. For me, I thought it was if I get exceptional service, if the waiter is overly attentive, if the food is hot, if it's well presented, you know, if they bring all the knives and forks without, without me having to ask, if there's no, no crumbs on the table from before the last patron, all of those things for me means that this particular establishment deserves a tip. And the waiter, because of the way he's treated me or she's treated me, deserves to be shown that I appreciate this extra um, treatment. But it shouldn't be a right. In America, it seems to be a right. You tip from the moment you get out that car. From you get out of a cab, they expect a tip. From you reach the hotel, they expect a tip. If they go to your room, they expect a tip. If you have a drink at the bar, they expect a tip. If you go to eat anywhere, they expect a tip. We're not not like buffets, but you know most restaurants they expect a tip. You know, and they really look down on you if you don't give a tip. So I can understand. And the thing is, is that, you know, these waiters who have the hump because they're being asked to give their tips to a charitable event, you know, it's almost like they're taking it for granted that we, the public, need to supplement their wages. I mean, really and truly, why should we um, give them extra? It's like when you do your nails and you're, 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 you have a pedicure. You're paying for a service. If I pay 30 quid, to have my feet done, I shouldn't have to pay a tip on top of that. And you see people give tips and it kind of makes you feel guilty. I, I, I don't anymore. I, I think to myself, 30 quid is more than enough. You factored in your tip in that. And um, that's all you're getting. If I go and go, if I go somewhere and they're going to charge me 15 quid for a pedicure, yeah, I'll give them a little extra because they're not charging me an arm and a leg to have my feet done. So that's the way I that's the way I look at it. If I think the price is too high, as far as I'm concerned, you factored in the tip and I'm not giving you a penny more. And you know what's interesting? You know when we have these Christmas events, you know, there's about twelve or thirteen of you, and you get this little do gooder at the table who says, Oh look, we all have to give ten percent. When you look at the tip at the end of the bill, it's like two hundred and fifty pounds. I mean, how does any one waiter in a beef eater warrant £250? It's absolutely ridiculous. It's not even that the service was all that great. I mean, if you, if you, if you don't want to give it, they look at you as though, you know, you've come out of space or something, as though you've committed the worst crime in the world. But I don't think tipping should be obligatory. And I don't think you should get any less service if you don't tip. People get a salary to do a job. 
and that job should be done to the best of their ability. They shouldn't be motivated by tips. Tips should be an optional extra, and if you get it, you're grateful. But it should not be given, in my opinion, as a right. It should not be expected. Now, what the employers are doing in like certain hospitality services, they are giving them low wages, and these people are expect to make are expected to make it up through tips. Now, suppose you get a little cheapskate like me. They're not going to have their. They're not going to have it supplemented. And you know what else? It's not only the waiter who is doing the work. You have to think about the people who are cooking the food, who are you know who are preparing it, who are preparing the kitchen, who are keeping the kitchen clean. They don't get tips. How come it's only the person who actually brings the food to your table seems to feel as though they're entitled to a tip? So if you want to call me a cheapskate, call me a cheapskate. Um, I did this book here, right? It's called, I wrote it a few years ago. It's called The Other Side of Tourism. And it's about when I went to Jamaica and um, I, I had that experience. You know, somebody was expecting a tip. And I didn't think that they deserved a tip. And they followed me around every single time when I came out. I mean, I, I didn't have any change on the, on the day anyway. But I decided that, you know, I said to them, look, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a tip before I leave or something like that. Every, t every time I left that room, I don't know where he would pop up from, you know. But he'd pop up looking for this tip. I mean, in the end... Um, I saw him on the street and I happened to have some change. No, not on the street. It was just outside the hotel. No, it was actually in the lobby of the hotel. And I said, oh, excuse me. I said, I've got your tip. And oh, look, 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 look. Shh, shh. This big old fuss. And I'm like, what's the problem? Turns out he's not supposed to get tips anyway. You know what I mean? And I was letting the establishment, the establishment know I was giving him a tip. I mean, either you're supposed to get a tip or you're not. But why do I have to do it? Why do I have to be all secretive about it? I'll tell you. Anyway, tips is a very touchy subject. And um, I understand for those who don't get much pay and who rely on tips. Um, but really, is it our responsibility or is it the responsibility of the employer to pay them enough so that if they don't get a tip, they can still, you know, live comfortably? Um, what else have I got here? Oh, yeah, tipping had its origins into the underclass. Um, I didn't even realise that. It's the Pullman, um, the Pullman porters were men hired to work on the railroads as porters on sleeping cars. Porters were not paid a living wage and needed to rely on tips to earn enough to make a living. So they entertained the passengers and then passengers would throw them a few coppers. Under the leadership of A. Philip Randolph, Pullman Porters formed the first black, first all-black union, the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, in 1925. Formation of the union was instrumental in the advancement of the civil rights movement. These African-American men who rode the nation's railroad as Pullman Porters between 1867 and 1969. Yeah, so that's quite interesting. That's where all this tipping came from. You know, they, they had, you know, back from slavery days when they didn't want to pay blacks anything. And so the, the blacks would entertain um, the whites, I assume. I, don't know, I can't imagine them entertaining themselves. And get paid a few shillings and that's how tips came into being. So now you know. Every time you give a tip, think of that. Think of the Pullman brothers. Um... Oh, yeah. Did you know that while most companies offer benefits such as health insurance and paid vacation, sick leave, and in America they're called the 401k plans, restaurant business, they hardly, they don't get those benefits. I didn't know that. I mean, when you look at it from that perspective, if they don't get benefits just because they work in a, hot, in a restaurant, it's even more important that they are supplemented or more important that the employer pays them a proper wage. 
because if they're not getting benefits on top of that they're not making any tips because as as we are squeezed you know money is getting less and less we don't have as much as we used to and sometimes when you go out you can just about you want to go out you want to take the family out you want to take out your kids or your grandkids and it's enough to, you know to try and take out and you know divvy out the the bill to pay for everyone, let alone to think about putting 10% on top of it. 10% on top of £100 is, is £10. £10 can buy you a loaf of bread. It can buy you half a dozen eggs. It can buy you bacon if you eat bacon. It can buy you a bag of potatoes. It can get you some veg. And then because of the way the tipping um, system is structured, you have to give that 10 quid to the waiter. Um, let me see what else. Oh yeah, this is sources I news. Pizza Express have, has pressured some of its waiters to hand over a portion of their tips. So it's not even all their tips. During the company's week-long Mac Macmillan Cancer fundraising drive, employees of these two um, restaurant branches have claimed. The thing is, they might be struggling. And then if they're struggling and they and you know, the few little um, tips that they get, they're now being asked to put that in for charity. They probably need charity. So it might be difficult for them. We don't know people's individual um, situation. You know, some people are really desperate for a tip. Have you seen these people who put down a 20p tip? I mean, that is an insult. You might as well forget it. If you can't put down a decent tip, forget it. I mean, minimum I put down is two quid because I know at least with two quid, they might be able to get a drink of something. But you know what I mean? But 20p, 50p, you're taking the p. Forget about it. Um, what else did I want to say? Being asked to pay 10% of a meal is a charitable donation and many patrons are made to feel guilty when they don't leave a tip. Which is true. Very, very true. Is it time to rethink the rules of tipping? How much to give as a tip to whom and how often can be confusing? Yeah, because when you think about it, when you're tipping, I mean... And how often do you do that? Some people go to the bar, they give the barman a tip. Some people, they come back and sit at the table, they give the um, waiter a tip. They go and get their, collect their coat from the cloakroom, they end up giving the cloakroom a tip. Then they go out and get their car, their car's pulled up to, to them outside the restaurant, they give that parking attendant a tip. I mean, where does it stop? I mean, we don't do it so much in the UK. Like I said, that's why they call us the meanest tippers. But I can see why. We value our money. You know, we're not, we don't kind of play, throw it out willy-nilly. I mean, you work hard for it. And like I said, I will, I will leave a tip on principle. I just feel, especially if the service is good, I shouldn't say on principle. But I've never not left a tip put it that way but it is half to do with even if I get a bad service it's half to do with feeling for the um, the waiter or the waitress because sometimes you can tell they're trying so hard to be nice and it's it's difficult for them so even if they haven't given me all the service that I would like I tend to give them a tip because I just look at them. Some of them are so young and you know that they're struggling and you know that, you know, they. I remember there was one one boy and he came and he kneeled down beside me at the table and he's saying, is there anything else I can do? And I'm so glad you decided to come to here and eat and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, oh, and let me wipe off the table for you. And is there anything else you want? And I'm like, oh, God bless him. You know, how can you not give a tip when somebody's doing all of that? 
you'd have to be as hard as nails. I mean, I went with somebody who said, oh, he's only doing it for a tip. He's only doing it for a tip. So what, really? It's a part of the job. And so, you know, I just felt personally that he was really trying. And I would have felt really, really bad if I hadn't. Whether he was just doing it for the tip or not, it didn't really make that much difference. Um, yeah, where does tipping stop? Deliveries, cabs, bringing your car, even some petrol attendants expect a tip. Hair salons expect a tip. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. But wage theft is all too common. In 2018 alone, the Department of Labour concluded that more than 5,700 investigations in the restaurant industry, collecting more than 42.8 million in back wages for more than 41,000 workers. You see, you get the people with the lowest skills usually in restaurants. And these are the ones that they try and uphold, you know, withhold withhold their, their salaries, um, according to a DOL spokesperson. In a 2012 case in New York, celebrity chef Maria Batali, his business partner Joseph Batianich, and the companies they co-owned agreed to pay a record to 5.25 million to settle a tip skimming lawsuit brought by then current and former employees at several of their restaurants while denying allegations. Why would you do that? Why would you withhold people's wages? Aren't you getting enough? <sighs> the upshot of low and unsteady wages. Tipped workers are about twice as likely, 13% to live in poverty as non-tipped workers, which is 6.5%. According to a joint study by the University of California, Berkeley, and Economic Policy Institute, EPI, a think tank based in Washington, D.C., that focuses on the economic needs and of low and middle income American workers. The thing is with America, I mean, tipping is a culture. So I can understand why they brought that out. It really is a culture. It's just taken for granted. Another point of contention in the restaurant subculture is the much discussed wage discrepancy between back of the house staff, dishwashers and cooks who do not get direct tips from and the front house staff, servers and bartenders who do, a division that also tends to break along racial lines with African American and Latino employees much more likely to be working in the untipped positions. One proposed solution, the pooling of tips by all workers, has been extremely controversial, particularly to a fix the Trump administration tried to mandate in 2017, where West, sorry, wherein restaurant owners and managers would control the collection and distribution of all tips. However, unscrupulous managers could legally pocket tips. Nah, that ain't going to work. Can you imagine? All the tips go to the manager. They can pocket it. It's sad to think that you can't trust people. You know, especially people in power and managers. But, you know, people get desperate, they get greedy, they, they become unethical. And they do that. They rip off people. And how can anyone prove how much tip they got? Well, it goes straight to the manager. Somebody could have left you a five, five pound tip. Somebody could have left a 50 pound tip. Because they're drunk or because they're feeling generous or because it's a stag night. Do you think that that uh, manager is going to say, oh, look, this one gave you a 50 quid tip? No, he's not. Probably put five pound out there and pocket the rest. Sad, but true. Uh, let me see. What else have I got here? Servers of colour, they're the worst. Servers of colour, in other words, black people, they're much more likely to work at lower end restaurants and thus earn smaller tips. And their tips are substantially lower than those given to white servers at the same establishment, according to Lynn's research. Why do people tip at all when they know they will never return to the same establishment and thus don't need to tip to ensure high quality service in the future? 
Um, they, the answer to that is some people relish tipping as a chance to flaunt their wealth and status. Well, yeah, I guess it. Uh, yeah, you can do that, can't you? I mean, you get some people fling fifty pounds, a hundred pounds tip. I remember, especially Christmas times. You know, some people they pay extraordinary tips. That's why people like to work in those expensive um, hotels. You know, down the West End, the Grosvenor and the Barclay and all that. They get massive tips, especially around Christmas, just for taking them up to their room. Because you've got all the big wigs there, um, performing a good deed of helping someone. People by nature care about what others think of them, even if it's even if they're never going to encounter the work again, the thought that the work is unhappy or disappointed will play on their minds, and so they leave a tip. Even though they're not going back anymore. Some service staff tolerate harassment, inappropriate or degrading behaviour from customers to optimise their earnings. Well, that's sad, that is, because you do get, you know, some men, you know, pulling out waiters' skirts and, Keep making crass comments and because they want the tips you know they tolerate it which isn't very nice and I mean it's vice versa you get people um, harassing men and you know and they tolerate it because of their low income the women tend to be bigger tippers than men 20% versus 16% because I believe women like me have a bit more compassion about for the um, server or the waiter. Yeah, so let me see. Oh, I'm very tired. Excuse me. I don't think I've ever yawned before. Time to me to go to my bed. Um, what started in the Middle Ages? A brief history of tipping. I think I've done that though, haven't I? Yeah, started in the late Middle Ages. When wealthy estate owners would give a servant a few sh extra coins out of appreciation or compassion. Beginning in 1867, Pullman put newly freed slaves to work for almost no salary, forcing them to rely on the gratuities train passengers gave them for cheerfully performing the servile tasks that enabled those travellers to ride in what was then the height of luxury. So, I hope you found that interesting. Because yeah, sometimes we take these things for granted, don't we? You know, we tip, sometimes we feel like tipping. We don't really know how it makes us feel. Should we tip? Should we, should we not tip? You know when we go and get our car washed? That's another thing. You go and get your cars washed. And, you know, you have almost feel as though you've got to tip them as well, even though they, they've charged you 10, 14. Now it's gone up to 16 quid. To wash your car so why would you need to feel you have to give a tip on top of it it's about and you know sometimes i do look at them and i think about four or five of them washing your car they charge you a tenner i mean they get maybe about two quid each but there again it's like it's like a um conveyor belt they just the cars keep coming and they keep going out so they probably make enough money but i don't think we should feel guilty about tipping especially when people charge a fee and i'm sure they uh, make allowances and they they think to themselves well we might not get a tip but at least this will cover our expenses so no guilt tipping okay bye bye